so let us start with chapter number 14 that is study plan and project management now let us understand why <coughs> we need to uh, do this project management or research project and what are the principles of it so we were starting with principles of project management so project management ensures that whatever objectives we have defined uh, they are met at the end of study second uh, it also ensures that all the products are delivered within a particular time frame within your budget and without compromising the quality that means all your expected quality standards are met if you uh, do the project management <coughs> and end result should provide directions for future implications or implications for better tomorrow so what are the processes which are involved uh, first we have to allocate the resource and manage them and uh, the principle is basically uh, management we have to manage the resources uh, resources and the goal is basically efficient and expedient progress to achieve uh, the goal uh, the second process is planning and scheduling activity once you have allocated the resource you have to plan all your activities according to it so <laughs> the principle here is basically monitoring and uh, supervision and we can reach the goal with best possible uh, quality standard so what are the important factors to be taken care uh, regarding study plan and project management so obviously uh, human resource uh, resources in term of time and funds and basically the quality of data so there is one question uh, in assignments for example it should be ensured that products or deliverables of health research projects are delivered within defined time frame defined budget and expected quality standards or all of the above so obviously we uh, need all uh, three uh, to ensure that whatever product or deliverables are there they are delivered uh, with proper time budget as well as the quality so answer is d uh, sometimes people they don't plan or they do not uh, have a particular uh, project management approach so they go with ad hoc approach uh, let us start uh, the project and we will see when I, uh, uh, whatever comes we will uh, look into it at that point of time so that is known as ad hoc approach and ad hoc approach is a very uh, non-productive approach uh, uh, when you are conducting a research study <coughs> the confusion at the beginning of study that i want to do a study but i'm not clear about the objective you have prepared a questionnaire but uh, you're not clear about exact information you need you can collect data but you will not you are not sure that how you're going to use it so there is a low development effect and possibility of getting results in a short time span are advantages of ad hoc approach because you are not uh, putting your brain or resources for project management so obviously you are putting less effort in developing a research study and obviously because you've just started it uh, you can get uh, results in a very short uh, time but quality of it is uh, questionable but uh, consequences of this ad hoc approach they are disastrous first of all that data uh, are difficult to analyze because you have not planned it uh, you are not sure how you are going to use it so whatever finding that you are getting they are difficult to interpret and uh, even interpretations are difficult to use in programs or even for policy making so it is a basically useless conclusions or data results that you are generating from this ad hoc approach so there are some questions about it for example study conducted following an ad hoc approach may lead to following consequences generation of useful data in programs of, or policy making no that is not true right efficient utilization of resource that is also not true serious difficulty in analysis and interpretation yes if you are doing ad hoc approach you will get data which is difficult to analyze as well as interpret so yes answer is c so d all of the above is obviously a wrong answer here so please be careful some people have tendency to tick mark when they see all of the above uh, option so here d is not the answer please read carefully every question is uh, framed very meticulously in the exam now second which of the following can be considered true in case of ad hoc approach to conduct a research study uh, its advantages are low development effort and getting results in short time span yes that is true 
Its advantage is that accuracy of results is usually high. No, that is very wrong. They are not accurate. So only A is the answer and both A and B. So now some people may say that, okay, here A and C both could be the right answer. Uh, and yeah, I agree with you, but the answer which has been given by ICMR is basically you should uh, be taking the best signal answer. So here the first option that is best is I think the first option that is A. So its advantage is that it's low development effort and possibility of getting results in short span, right? Now, till now we are very well versed with the life cycle of research that, but here we are just uh, dividing it into three stages. So first stage is pre-planning stage that first we have understood the data needs and we have formulated our research question. Then in analysis or so planning stage, uh, we formulate the study objective, we plan the analysis, we prepare all data collection instruments or forms. Then we collect the data, we analyze the data and then we uh, draw conclusions. And finally, post planning stage that based on this conclusion, we formulate future recommendations and we inform all the stakeholders of the research. Now, they can sometimes ask, that which uh, step of life cycle is in which stage right so th that is uh, need to be remembered so first two are in pre planning last two are in post planning rest all in between are in planning stage so i have made a mnemonic to remember it if you have better one just uh, post it in the comments or let me know by email i would like to incorporate uh, that mnemonic uh, so that we can remember it easily so first is data need then question then objective so need and qo analysis planning data collection tool collection of data so a c c a c r i right so analyze the data conclusion recommendation and inform the stakeholders now let us see what are the questions which are being asked which of the following is ideally the first step in developing a study so there are you see now this type of questions are going to come fixing the title formulating the research question writing background planning for analysis so you have to just remember this that where does this form so research question is the first before that there is data need so if formatting the research question is there and there is no data need obviously this is the first step which of the following is the criteria for good research question okay long and self-explanatory using complex term no research question should be short specific and simple the second option is a question based on ill-defined hypothesis no question should be based on a well-defined hypothesis question based on strong hunch on part of investigator no hunch uh, could not be a basis for forming a good research question Question should be based on established theory and some research evidence. Yes, that is true. A uh, good research question always based on some established theory or some kind of research evidence prior. So answer is D here. Which of the following represents the correct sequence in life cycle of study? Now, this type of questions are really very difficult and that's why I have made the mnemonic. So if you can just go back uh, and Q O. A C C A R I. So need question objective analysis collection in instrument preparation and then collect data and finally analyze it. So A C C A then uh, C A C C A C that is draw conclusion and finally recommendation and information. So now let us uh, see. So developing research question, so yes, Q, analysis A, data collection, that is C, and data analysis is A. So I think answer is one, two, three, four, they're already arranged in the order, so that option is obviously B, one, two, three, four. Which of the following represents the correct sequence? Again, same kind of questions, so you have to identify it uh, so first of all need so n then we have to go for q so here there is no q so n q that is need question then comes the objective so o that is also going and finally 
एन क्यू ओ ए सी सी ए सी सो कलेक्शन इज नॉट देयर सो वी कैन डायरेक्टली गो फॉर एनालिसिस सो हियर आंसर इज सी बेसिकली यू डू मग अप द स्टेप्स ऑफ आर लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ दिस रिसर्च दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर कमिंग सो बी प्रिपेयर फॉर इट ओके सो वट इज अ रोड मैप फॉर मेकिंग अ स्टडी प्लान एंड प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव शुड बी वेरी क्लियर एंड दे फॉर्मुलेटेड ऑलरेडी देन यू चूज द राइट डिजाइन टू डिटरमाइन द की इंडिकेटर्स यू आइडेंटिफाई ऑल द पैरामीटर्स फॉर दो की इंडिकेटर्स एंड देन यू मेक एन एनालिसिस आउटलाइन दैट हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज योर रिजल्ट एंड फाइनली यू एस्टिमेट द सैम्पल साइज टू वैलिडेट दैट result right so this is the road map objectives design parameter identification outline the analysis and finally sample size estimation so what are all the important steps to implement a research plan successfully again it is the same thing which has been mentioned above objective right study design indicators parameters analysis outline and estimate the sample size so let us first see the uh, formulation of appropriate objectives for study now framing the study objective at the planning stage at the very beginning is very critical objectives cannot be added during study or after the study is over that, that that is wrong you should be very clear what we want to do before starting the study and fewer the better objective should be minimum very clear and achievable so i uses uh, mnemonic uh, uh, that is also mentioned in your icmr course that objective should be very smart uh, the s stands for it has to be very specific it has to be measurable uh, it has to be achievable it has to be relevant and it has to be time bound now uh, you can also divide your objectives into primary and secondary you can keep two objectives the first one is your primary objective because uh, that objective forms the basis of your sample size and secondary end points are analyzable issues which are additional information that you get uh, while doing the study and all the objectives they should be very uh, clearly phrased it should uh, uh very dedicatedly uh, say that what we are trying to say for example if you want to test a hypothesis uh, you should use the worm determine whether a contaminated well caused an outbreak like that if you want to measure a quantity t then you should use the verb uh, estimate uh, the prevalence of uh, diabetes so use proper words uh, proper uh, phrases uh, to frame your objective okay so that was a uh, formulation of appropriate objectives for the study so state whether true or false so framing several study objective improves the study planning and management uh, no objective should be very few so it is a false statement which of the following statements regarding study objective is correct objective should be defined at the planning stage yes that is true any time no at the end no objective should be defined before research questions uh, no if you see n q o right uh, n o q right so uh, the answer is objective should be defined at planning stage of study which of the following statement describes uh, the study objectives they should be minimum yes achievable yes clear they can be primary and or secondary thus that is also true adding objective during study implementation is a good practice now it is a very bad practice so a and b both statements are correct so answer here is d smart objectives are goals that are designed to be specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound yes which of the following is an illustration of non measurable objective incidents it is a measure experience is shared by victims that is not a measure to determine regular skin emollients applied from 2 weeks of age reduced development